Welcome to The Daily Dish with New York Times bestselling author, Leanne Ely. Putting vibrancy back into your everyday life and feeding your heart, mind, body, and soul. Join us every day at 1 p.m. Eastern for Motivational Monday, Tuesday's Tip, Wise Woman's Wednesday, Thirsty Thursday, Food Fight Friday, and of course, Q&A, where no question is off limits, and Soulful Saturday. Here is your host, Leanne Ely and The Daily Dish. Having a little jazz time, boop, jazz hands. <laughs> Well, guess what? It's Wise Women's Wednesday, and you're here. I'm so glad. Thanks for showing up. June, I see you. Patsy, Catherine, and Jackie, and of course, my girl, Joanne. You would never not be here on Wednesday, would you, Joanne? There's my girl, Flynn, in the house. Man, having all kinds of amazing success, Flynn, too. By the way, congratulations. Helen and Carla. Carla, Carla, Carla. I was thinking about you today when I was writing today's show. You're going to find out why. Jocelyn's here. Denise is here. Marguerite. Isn't this joyful? And speaking of joy, there is Sharon Joy Sage. Hello, Sharon. Angie's in the house. I'm just going to sit here and read off who's here. <laughs> I'm so glad you're all here. And thank you so much for showing up. It makes it so much more fun, especially when I see Doris and Diane and Jennifer here. Jennifer's been putting some nice selfies up, which um, we got to see her pretty face, which I've enjoyed. Thanks so much for everybody, too, who's been participating in the Hot Melt 30. Has that not been a great challenge? I don't know about you, but I've had a blast with the whole thing. I have had a blast. And if anybody here, and I, know I don't see Sarah yet, but I know she'll show up. There's Margaret. Hi, Margaret. Anybody, and Lindsay's in the house too. Very talkative, Lindsay, by the way. And our Amber's here. And of course, Jenny. I just talked to Jenny on the other side of the screen. Kathy is in the house. So I gave a, a Sarah, who is kind of laid up with a little, she's got some kind of fasci fasciitis business going on, whatever, with her uh, quadricep, I think it was that the doctor said. I can't remember the exact details. She shared it. And I gave her a challenge, and I'm going to call it Sarah's challenge, that just because we get laid up with one body part doesn't mean the rest of the body parts need to sit on the sidelines. So who's with me and is willing to do 10 minutes of upper body work every single day? We'll use YouTube as a gym, and that's the whole ball of wax. We can do, remember, there's pulling. That's a bicep. There's pushing. That's the tricep. We push, we pull, we do things, all that. Okay, Sharon's in. Got Sharon. There's Debbie. Jocelyn's in the house. I'm so glad to see that. Who else is in? Catherine's in. Jocelyn's in. 10 minutes a day. 10, 10, 10 minutes. Wait, Susan, Susan, Susan's in the house. There's my girl, Lucy. Lucy, you can do this. This is all about, you need that upper body strength to make that beautiful art that you make, right? Debbie's in. Look at this. How much fun. So Sarah's challenge, 10 minutes a day. And I want you to think about this. Isolate the body parts into pushing and pulling. Okay. Um, different, every some, something different every day. So shoulders, your back, chest, and it can all be done sitting. All you have to do is put it into YouTube, sitting, whatever. And if you don't have little tiny weights, which they're available everywhere now, um, use water bottles. Use soup cans, whatever you want to do. But this is how we move the needle. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. There she is. Rehab on her quads going well. She just picked up some heavier dumbbells for the challenge. Now start light. Start light. I might even show you some fun stuff. You know what? I might even share, share some stuff with you. Would you like that? You can look at my armpits. Do they need a shave? Probably. <laughs> I keep forgetting to shave. You know, one thing that happens as you get older, your hair is less. You don't have much hair. I have less hair on my arms than I've ever had. And it just, shaving is, oh yeah, I forgot to shave, but no big deal because you can't see it. Andrea says, strong women. Susan says she's in. There's my girl Susan in Oregon. I love this. June's going to do it. Joanne's going to do it. Packing and lifting boxes. Amen, sister. Amen. I'm going to show you all the things. Vanessa loved my armpit thing. <laughs> Debbie does push-ups on the kitchen counter. That's so good with barbells. Shoulder rolls while on the, look at her, Debbie. Yeah, isn't it interesting what happens? I was noticing that today. 
And um, I'm thinking, you know, my shoulders are really starting to, uh, you know, really sh starting to show some stuff here. I'm getting, I'm getting really strong shoulders. I like it. You started light, but the physical therapist doubled your weight this morning. That very good. Very good. Jennifer says beauty support brings out the grays. You know what it does? It brings out the new hair and it just happens to grow in gray. Sorry, Jennifer. I'm sharing your pain, but see, see right here. This is all grow new growth. You see all that? It used to be a big bald spot, but it's all beauty support growth. But look what color it's grown in. <laughs> I'll take it. I will take it. Patsy's doing the Sarah challenge. Sarah, you got a hashtag named after you, girlfriend. We're all in it. Mm -hmm. We're all in it. I love doing upper body work. I hate doing lower body work, but I love doing upper body work. So I will I will help, with you, help you with this. Just ask me. We're going to do it. Juanita's here. Look. This is our this is our quote of the week. There is beauty in everything. Just not everyone sees it. Thank you, Andy Warhol, for that. Now, ironically, you know, his art was soup cans, <laughs> you know, and other things. He had a different way of looking at things. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is exactly uh, interesting that today's quote is this, because today we're talking about cherishing time. And tomorrow we're going to go soup to nuts on how to action eyes, if you will the cherishing of time. But today I want to get you into the concept of thinking about this. Um, remember, one of the most important things that we can do is think about our thinking. What are we thinking about? And does it need changing out? Is it is it on is it is it on target for the stuff that we want? Or are we bringing in the stuff that we don't want? We always have to take a look at that, right? Am I right? So that's what we're going to be discussing. And I'm really I am so delighted about that. You know what else I'm delighted about is how many people we we, we are all, we are a quarter of the way sold out already. We have a hundred tickets available for in person. We're already we're already at a quarter of them gone, and this is only the first you know round. We've released round two of the early bird tickets. Now these are not the cheapest that you can get. This is the second cheapest that you can get. But I'm going to just tell you right now, get on it because we have a hard stop. At a hundred people, we're done. Nobody else can come. There will be a waiting list at that point. So if you want to go, it's time to go get signed up. Go to savingdinner.com forward slash bloom and get your ticket. Okay? Get it now. Secondarily, you can get your, your virtual ticket at any time. That's always available there. Remember, you're going to get all the goodies. We've got people asking, what am I going to wear? How far is it from my house? I'm going to give everybody a, a Google lesson. Rather than telling you how far this is from my house or that is from my house, I'm going to teach you how to do this yourself. You know why? You can teach a man to fish. You can give a man a fish or you can teach him how to fish. And I say the same thing. You can give a woman a fish or you can teach her how to fish. I'm going to teach you women how to fish right now. When you go to Google, in that search window, you put in an address. In this case, you put in my address. You all know what it is. You put my address in there to... And then you put Sunset Motel address or the Cedar Mountain Community Center address. And then you put drive time and click go. It will give you the exact directions all written out. It'll show you on a map and it'll tell you the time. Okay. So please do this for me. Start fishing. Deal? Pinkies up. That's how we get things done. So I told you all about that. The gala is on the 13th of next month, 13th and 14th. This is on a Wednesday and a third, Tuesday and a Wednesday and one o'clock at the regular time. And then in the evenings at 7 p.m. Eastern. You know what happens at 7 p.m. Eastern? We pull out the stops because we're all gonna have the razzle dazzle on. We're all, and wait till you see what we have coming. You know how I told you we're asking for everybody in the High Ponytail Club and everybody, we asked a bunch of people, how many people um, we asked you for permission to use your photos? You're going to want to show up for the gala. That's all I'm allowed to say. Otherwise, Jenny will slap me silly. She will. She'll take one of those full bloom flip flops and just let me have it. I know she will. What to wear? Tiara flip flops, pink head to toe. Bingo. So what I'm saying is for when we go to full bloom, now for the gala, wear whatever you want, but you, you will be coming on camera if you want to at the 7 p.m. one. The 7 p.m. one 
we're taking out all the stops. It's going to be a full on party. Now at the, at the, so that's the gala. Now it's going to, that's going to be our, our usual thing. It's going to be on Crowdcast and all the, all the bells and whistles that we usually do. However, for full bloom, you know what you're going to need to wear for the, for the Friday night meet and greet, you got to razzle dazzle it up, girlfriends. It is cocktail hour. We're going to have charcuterie boards, but you need shoes that are going to work for going down to the boat. And remember, right now, you need to be conditioning for that little staircase because it's no small measure. I do it a couple of times a day, so for me, it's not a big deal. But it's 67 stairs down and 67 stairs up, okay? The first time I did, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. The first time I did it, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so out of shape. Now it's like nothing. I get a little out of breath, but now my puppy, you know, I'm trying to keep up with them. <laughs> it's so great. Great way. That's practical fitness right there. Functional, regular, everyday fitness. So I'm really, I'm grateful that we don't have a house right on the water now. We have to walk down to get to it. So keep that in mind. You can bring your razzle dazzle shoes if you want to, and then take a pair of flip flops so that you can go down to the dock. That's for that. Then we will be opening our pop-up full bloom uh, boutique. It's all new gear. That will be opening probably next week. I'm not sure when, but Jenny and, and Amber, they've got everything going. And that's what I'm that's what we're wearing for Saturday day and Sunday, whatever. It's super casual. I want you comfortable because we're gonna be doing some work. It is a workshop conference, it is all the things. Um, we need to have all the stuff together, okay? Yes, you missed your high pony? Well, Kathy, just all you have to do is say, yes, I'll give me permission. You ask Amber, she might have it. Yes, Lincoln can lead the fitness. I'm telling you, that dog is, he's 45 pounds now, 45. And just a piece of work. What can I tell you about that? All right, our, our supplement of the week, by the way, flipping flying out the door. <laughs> Right? And don't do you blame me? This is Inflacrusher. This is the one that I say, take this, not Tylenol, not Advil. Take this. Do you know it's curcumin? It's 100% bioavailable curcumin. Do you know what that means? It means that it doesn't go into your stomach and gets digested. It goes and bypasses the stomach, goes into the to the intestinal tract where it gets absorbed and does its business. And let me tell you, it's effective for pain. It's effective for inflammation. And listen to me for me uh, for just a minute. 35,000 people each year die from having too much Tylenol. I don't want you to be a statistic like that. It is an anti-inflammatory and it will bring inflammation down, but not without a lot of damage to your liver. Okay. Inflacrusher. If you buy three bottles, you're going to get the fourth one for free. That's a $49 value. Go to savingdinner.com forward slash show to see it. Also, our tools are fabulous. And this week, all this week, we're giving away little clips from our last full bloom swag bag. So if you get, if you buy the, the quote deck, which you should because those are running out and it comes with this cute little stand or the little mug, what are you waiting for? You're gonna get a, a little clip thrown in there. And wait till you see too, we've got some other exciting things happen happening. You'll see if you order something, well, I don't know, maybe a kit of some sort, you're going to see something happen on your order form, won't you? I love to tease you. Such fun stuff going on. Um, oh, Sarah says, I thought I loved Infocrusher before my injury. Love it even more now. I know. I've got Mark right now. He's shooting the whole practically a bottle a day. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but he, he, he has just had such pain with, you know, he pulled a, um, a tendon. So you know how that is. That's very, very painful. Did I tell you everything? I sure hope so. We're 15 minutes into the show for heaven's sakes. All right. Question and answer. Of course, there's, there's how to do it. Support at savingdinner.com. Question for Leanne on Friday and do that, would you? Because uh, we're probably going to be changing that up a little bit. I'll, I'll let you know, but we're going to probably change that up. So go and get it. Sarah, aren't I good at this though? I'm such a good tease. I really am. I've got this thing royer for sound. So this week we've been talking about time and you know why? Because when I think about everything in my life that I have, one thing that I don't have that I don't possess that I don't can't count on is time. I don't know if today's my last day and either do you, <laughs> right? 
it's that precarious. That's how time is. It's it's something that needs to be precious and cherished and loved and really valued instead of the, the stuff that we usually do of just wasting time and frittering it away, killing it and and just whatever else that you you know you hear people say that all the time. And when I hear it, I just cringe. It is a cringeworthy thing to say because it's saying I don't value the time that God has given me. It's essentially it essentially it. But the thing that I look at is what is time exactly, except that it's a daily gift, right? And that's why we call it the present. We've all heard that one before. But time is something that we have to, especially as wise women, learn to cherish daily, not just on monumental occasions, not just on, you know, grandbaby's first birthday or whatever it is, but cherish on the daily basis, the little things all along the way. And here's an interesting thing. You know, I, I looked up cherry. Okay, I always do this because, you know, you can find what these different things mean. Cherish number one um, definition is to protect, care for lovingly. I love that so much because it just, it makes me think of all of our mothers, our collective mother's hearts, right? That's what we do. We protect, we care for, and we're lovingly doing so with our children, our grandchildren, the people that we love, our cats, our dogs, our, our people, the things that are so dear to us and in our lives. And number two is cherish is to hold dear, a cherished memento. I have a chair, you know, a couple of cherished things from my mother, just a couple little tiny lit, itsy bitsy things that you wouldn't, you know, wouldn't mean a thing to anyone. But for me, I cherish them because they were hers. And number three, which I really love this, is to keep a hope or ambition in our mind. And when I think about this, I think about you. I think about your vision boards. I think about what it is that you are holding that's near and dear to your heart, the things that you want to do. I think about Lucy and her beautiful art. I think about Patsy and her handwork. I think about Sarah and her little collages of stuff that she puts together and how she's such an encouragement in our group. And I think about each one of you and how you deliver your gifts and how you cultivate that inside of you and what that's all about because it's your hope and it's your ambition and it's all wrapped together and that's to be cherished. It's in your mind's eye and it's in your heart too. It lives in your soul because it's really who you are. I believe it's a part of your DNA. So we cherish time because, and wise women do this, they cherish time because they understand that this may be the last day on earth. Um, and this this could be somebody else's last day. And we would, you would know, they'd be missed, right? Of course. But think about it this way. Think about the times when you've really dreaded something. And I think about this, you know, and it almost makes me cry because it's getting around the, you know, five year mark, I guess. Is this my mom's passing is five years now? And, um, you know, it, this is just right when her birthday was and she was rallying, starting to be do better than just a real big decline. And she fell and, you know, pretty much that was it. Um, and she died on July 3rd. But I think about this and I just remember this, this whole transition that we had to do where I had to start taking care of her and I had to start giving her showers and she dreaded it and I dreaded it. And the look in her eyes, I'll never forget. But we just, we went with it and we had a sense of humor about it. And um, I handed her a washcloth and I said, hey mom, you wash your lady bits. <laughs> I don't need to do that for you, do I? And we thought that was the funniest thing in the whole world. But you know, I had to give her that shower and I did it thinking, uh, loving her the whole time through. And it was exhausting and, and all of that. And I think, you know, afterwards I'd have to, she, I mean, she had, she had COPD, she couldn't breathe, you know? So, and then I, you know, cream her all down, put um, coconut oil on her cause she had real dry skin, then put some lotion on her and I'd wrap her in this, I bought her this huge terry cloth robe and wrapped her in it. After a while, it started to get tedious because she got really bad. And the, the worse her condition was, the harder it was to take care of her. And I remember thinking, oh, today's shower day and blah, blah, blah. And I remember in my head thinking, Leanne, don't do that. <laughs> 
Because one day you're going to look back and wish today was shower day. We have to cherish the good things and the bad things. We have to cherish the things that are hard too. Because the things that are hard sometimes, these are the things that we do out of love and out of care. And, you know, changing a baby's diaper. Anybody, anybody ever say, oh my gosh, <laughs> so much fun to change a diaper? Never. How about those explosive ones, right? How about those explosive diapers? But the next thing you know is your baby's gone and there's no more diapers. And then those babies become teenagers and you're tearing your hair out of these teenagers and then they become adults and then they move out and they move on. And you know what? And our elderly parents might move on to glory. When we cherish our time and our moments, the moments day by day, that's when we're living in wisdom. That's when we're living with, with, the, the touch of God in our hearts, in our hands, and in our lives. That's when we get to bring in and feel the Holy Spirit moving in our lives. Then, not, not these big, not a big wedding, not a big elaborate birthday party or some celebration or having a new house. Or, it is in the tiny moments. And that's what I'm asking you to do right now is to think about the moments and to cherish even the things that are hard, even the things that are that are difficult and that just maybe are kind of awful to do, too, because someday they'll be gone. So cherishing those moments, all of them help us, I believe, in my whole heart, they help us to love deeper to grow empathy, to grow inside, and to be more profoundly human, more profoundly loving, and more profoundly caring. So I, I you told you about my mom in the shower. I, I think I told you the story a long time ago about my children, you know, when my children were growing up. And it was fat. Gosh, it was so fast. And at times it seemed like it slowed down and it was hard. And other times it just seemed like it just flittered away. But I remember this, that my kids were just constantly getting dirty and it was a big mess and we lived on this little farm and there were chickens, there were goats, there were everything everywhere and we had a big garden and it was terrific, you know, but there was a lot of work there. I'm not going to lie. And there was always dirt, always mom, mud. And I just remember um, being just kind of like, ah, oh, here we go again, you know, spotting the clothes and just here's the laundry and the constant laundry. I only had two kids. <laughs> I'm complaining. But I read, and I can't even, I wish I could remember the, the Bible verse, but I could have been a wise woman builds her house and foolish one tears it down with her own hands. And I read that and it pierced my heart. And I thought to myself, am I pulling down my own house? These children are, are my home. These people I've been blessed to have. And, and I'm cursing their clothes and just, oh, I wish they wouldn't get so dirty. Really? Is that how petty I am? And it reminds me, of circling the wagons back to petty of my, you know, my encounter with my neighbor. Is this what we do? We can't cherish if we're going to be petty. We can't cherish if we're going to be whining and complaining. We can't cherish if we say, oh, I'm so discouraged. It's so hard. It's so difficult. Really? Are you frustrated that much that life is so unbearable and hard? Or do you have a minute to just push back and to cherish absolutely everything? Because cherishing moments is the ultimate expression of gratitude for the life that you've been given. And you can write that down. I wrote that down in my journal today. Gratitude, th that cherishing moments is the ultimate, ultimate expression of gratitude to the creator for all that we've been given. Cherishing it like a locket given to you by your mother, like something precious like that. And I believe too that love always wins when our heart is steadied by this cherishing, when our heart is steadied and warmed by this, it grows. Our empathy becomes greater and no boundaries, you know? What about if we have boundaries for you know, things that we need to have boundaries and we don't have boundaries for our love. What if we were like that? They'll know who we are by our love, right? 
They'll know who you are by your love. Jesus said that. Your love will shine out. Do we see a lot of that this, in this world today? Do we see that? Or is it condemning and this and calling people out? And what do we see around us? Do we see people cherishing their lives and cherishing their moments? Do we see that? I don't see a lot of that. And that, that is sad. And we don't have to be those women. We are not those women. We're wise women. We just need to step up and into that wisdom given on high by the one who called you by name and put breath into your nostrils. That, that guy. So I remember that, you know, for me, I'm looking at like, what are the requirements then? What are the requirements for cherishing? And we're going to talk about these in detail tomorrow, but just a couple of things, their focus, what you're focusing on, you're going to get more of what you focus on. Remember that focus. It's your mindset. If you, if everything is, if everything, every time something goes a little awry, you decided that it's time to make a Facebook post about it, <laughs> or it's just not perfect. And you got to call, call somebody or text somebody or whatever, because you need everyone to know how horrible life is treating you. you that's the life that you've signed up for then. Period. My mother was a real hand wringer. I, I shared this with you over and over again. If it didn't go exactly according to plan, oh my gosh, you know? And I don't know how I didn't inherit that. Maybe I did and I just made a decision early on and just said, that's enough of that. You know, how do you live with that? How, I mean, how did she live to be 83, for heaven's sakes? That's a lot. And it's no way to live. It's, it's always looking for the negativity, always trying to find that, being a magnet for that kind of stuff. And that's what your mindset is. Your mindset's completely set on that garbage and it's you're gonna get it all back. And it's also a decision for heaven's sakes. You make a decision about what it is that you're gonna focus on, what it is that your mindset's gonna be and what it is that you're gonna cherish. You can't cherish anything if you're complaining all the time. <laughs> You have nothing, nothing to cherish. When my children were little, I used to tell them that they were having an amazing childhood. One day, one day I overheard my daughter or overheard my daughter talking to a girlfriend of hers about their childhood growing up in Green Creek, North Carolina, in our little farm. We had a meatball and meatloaf for our meat cows. Yes, we did have them. The kids rode them. Um, we had chickens and goats all named the goats were all named by flowers it was just it was magical it was a magical childhood we we went out and we had asparagus and we had wild raspberries growing everywhere we went foraging for mushrooms with the kids and then what we couldn't eat we took and sold it the backs into the back door of restaurants we seriously did all this stuff that was their childhood and it was magical and i told them every day when I tucked them in and said their prayers with them, you're having an amazing childhood. Well, and then I, one day I overheard my daughter at about 30 years old, she's 31 now. Oh, when the way we grew up, I had an amazing childhood. <laughs> if you want people to cherish these things, especially your little ones, let them know. Let them know what's going on. Let them know that they're having an amazing childhood. Look at you, you get the privilege of doing this. This is fabulous. Even if you don't have a lot, you don't have to complain and say, we just don't have the money for that. Just say, well, this is what we get to do. <laughs> you know, when my daughter was little, you know, there was uh, horses. We lived on a horse farm and a hunter, you know, hunter jumper farm with hounds and the whole bit. And she was quite the little horseman and everyone wanted her to get lessons. And so I did the math on all of that. And I finally said to the huntsman, no. It's just not, you know, going to work. And so when Caroline asked me why she couldn't, you know, do this, you know what I said to her? I said, it's just not going to work with our schedule. We're a homeschool family. And if you had to did this and then Peter went into doing that, it's not going to work for our schedule. We have other things that we're going to do. We're going to be well-rounded. And I don't think we're going to be horse people. That's how it worked. I didn't say, oh, we can't afford it. And oh, my gosh, get out your quarters. Let's start, you know. Because I wanted her to cherish her childhood and not look at, at scarcity and lack in her life. 
When you are looking at cherishing the moments, you're not you're not giving all the reasons why. You want to say, here's the pile of bills. You want to pay the bills and maybe that'll happen. <laughs> really? That's what my parents did, by the way. You know, we lived on scarcity lane practically because that's how they, you know, that was their mindset. That's what they focused on. That was their whole thing. Money doesn't grow on trees, you know. That was their whole thing. So what I look at is it's that our influence on our family, on our children, it's a confluence. We've talked about that together, that, that power that happens when two rivers meet. So that's how we merge a renewed focus. That's how we, mer rem uh, um, I can't say it. That's how we merge together uh, a corrected mindset and a decision to make and cherish every single one of these memories instead of cursing them cursing them. So cherish every moment, right? Yeah, my parents were pretty much depression, but I guess post depression, you know, my mother was 1933, my dad was 1926. Um, if you create those moments, you shift them to represent what you want them to be, don't you? You get to do that. It's your privilege to be able to do that. It's your privilege to put on new eyes at any time and to see things completely different, should you choose to do that. So you know, and I was even thinking, I was thinking about, so I'm talking about this, your family, your children. What about women who are alone? Well, they can just say, I'm alone. This is terrible, blah, blah, blah. And it's really lonely. You don't get it. And wah, 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 wah. <clears throat> and then I got a note from, is my girl Carla here? <laughs> Carla um, cherished, <laughs> cool in the game. Hey, Amen. I think we'll have to play that. Note to self, play cherish. Cherish. We're going to have to play that song. Somebody remind me. Um, so, you know what? Th this is, look at Lucy. I have so much fun living alone. Carla wrote me this beautiful card and sent it to me. And she said, you know, during, during this whole pandemic and everything, you were, uh, and I've got it over here. I can't remember. But she, she let me know that, you know, being in this group and being a part of the group and everything, it didn't make it so lonely anymore. And she felt like she was a part of and all of that. And I will tell you, this is the thing that I see with women that you can isolate. And, and we've had the big discussion about isolation too, haven't we? But you can isolate and be alone and just say, oh, poor pitiful me. Or you can say, you know what? Solitude is really a very, it's a huge blessing because I get to do these things that other women don't get to do. It's just how we choose to look at everything. And that's the difference between cherishing and dreading and even cursing the moments in our lives. And I just remember that card, beautiful card from our lovely Carla. It touched my heart. But Carla also changed her mind, changed her, changed the whole her whole focus and created her her what's the word I would say her her place in in our community, which we all have the invitation to do. It's not it's not an exclusive club. It's not a clique. You know, it is you, but in order to be a part of, you have to join in. That's exactly what she did. And, and when I saw that, you know, and I saw, and I thought about when Carla sent that card and then I thought about all of our other single ladies and how they're a part of, and they have all of their different things. You know what it said to me? It said to me that these are women who, who are looking to cherish the moments of their lives, regardless of their circumstances, you know? And that was was so appreciative. So I so appreciative. It's true, even for those of us with families, a fellowship of like-minded women is vital to vibrancy. I couldn't have said that better, Sarah. That's absolutely 100% it. We, we get to do all of this. So. so how much time do you have? How much, how much time do you have on this earth? How much time does your spouse have or your friends or any of us? How, many, how, many, how much time do you have? The, the answer to that is you do not know. None of us know. I mean, even if, God forbid, you should have somebody close to you who says, yeah, they, the doctor gave me uh, three months to live. They could be, you know, in a car accident tomorrow. I know it sounds really morose that I'm even mentioning this. But the point is, is that we just do not know. So therefore, it is imperative that we start looking at our time with cherishing eyes. Everything, everything, even the stuff we don't like. 
even the stuff that's not so great, if we can just say as we're wiping our little babies behind or our fathers behind, if we could just say, you know, yet I have this moment. It's not, poop's not fun. Nobody likes cleaning up poop. I cleaned up a really messy Lincoln poop today. It's not fun, but we do it anyway. And the, on the other side of that is it's, it's over, it's done with, and now I've got all this time that I have to cherish. Cherish it. So wise women know this, don't they? Wise women practice this with very full hearts daily, don't they? And tomorrow we're going to go into what cherishing can look like and how to build a habit of being the cherishing souls that we want to be. Because this is how we not only move into wisdom, but we move into the place of absolute vibrancy. That's razzle-dazzle right there, by the way. That's extraordinary razzle-dazzle. So I hope this blessed you today. It blessed me just writing it because it made me really start to rethink and re-see again and again. And we all need to keep uh, our focus in mind because, you know, I'll tell you, our focus goes out of whack so much. And losing someone, you all know, everybody, I'm sure everybody has lost someone that they've loved. And those moments were, every single one of them were cherished, even if it had something to do with <laughs> taking care of, of an unpleasant task. It's part of the equation and it's part of our get to's too. Peace be with you. I really appreciate you pinkies up lovelies. And I will see you tomorrow for Thirsty Thursday. Peace be with you. And by the way, if this meant anything to you and it was helpful, share it, would you? Bye. Thanks for watching. You can find us on YouTube on the Saving Dinner channel or on the Saving Dinner Facebook page. Check back daily for new episodes, Monday to Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. If you missed the live show, you can watch the replay. Until next time, pinkies up.